Are speed cameras doing more harm than good? To find out, we look at the evidence to see what the data is telling us. The speed camera partnership said there was a 44% reduction in fatal and serious collisions at their mobile speed camera sites. Sounds impressive. But look at those collisions displayed on a graph. Now we can see when that reduction occurred. And it was here, a year before the cameras started operating. So we know that the cameras did not cause that reduction because they simply weren't there when it occurred. But why did that reduction occur? To find that out, we need to go further back in time. So here are the same camera sites again, except this time the collisions go back eight and a half years, and they are shown every six months. What really stands out is that huge bump in the data, coloured green. At the start of that period, collisions suddenly increased, and then at the end, suddenly dropped back down again. Something caused that bump, and we know that it was nothing to do with the speed cameras, because all of it occurred long before they arrived. So what was it? The answer is the site selection process. It's how they selected these sites that caused that bump. So we need to find out what the features of site selection are, and we can do that in this spreadsheet. On the third page, I've created a database of randomly generated numbers, and we're going to use this to select camera sites. Each row represents a road, each column is a year, and the numbers represent collisions. We then choose our SSP, or site selection period, to be the three years shown in green. And if a road has a cluster of collisions in that period, it is designated a speed camera site. The second page has the same database, except it only includes the sites we selected. And the results are on page one. Here we just add up the collisions on our camera sites and display those results on the graph. This graph is crucial. If we understand the features in this graph, we can work out the real effect of speed cameras. So here is the same graph again, but with those features labeled. The most obvious feature is that bump in the data during the SSP. That bump is caused by the site selection process because we chose those sites when the collision rate was unusually high during that period. Now we know the mean rate of these randomly generated numbers, and before the SSP, collisions occurred at around their mean rate. They then diverge from the mean to a higher rate at the start of our SSP, and then they suddenly drop back down to around their mean rate at the end of our SSP. That reduction at the end is what's called regression to the mean. The most important observation is that if speed cameras are not deployed, then collisions ought to continue at around their mean rate, and not the rate that occurred during the SSP. So back to the speed camera sites. That data is telling us what happened at these sites. First, it's telling us that the speed camera partnership chose the two and a half year period shown in green to select these sites. And second, that after choosing their sites, it took them a year to get permission from the Department for Transport to run their speed cameras. Third, and most importantly, collisions were occurring at around their mean rate before the SSP, and they return to around their mean rate at the end of the SSP. And it is that mean rate before and after the SSP that should have continued had they not run their speed cameras. But they did. And when they did, the collision rate rose above the previous mean rate. That suggests that speed cameras are not saving lives, but are actually causing an increase in fatal and serious collisions. If you want to know more about regression to the mean, I have a page on my website. Also on my website is my full report into the mobile speed cameras in Thames Valley. If you are a road safety professional and you still claim that speed cameras save lives, you need to prove it. And it's easy. Simply run your speed cameras within scientific trials. If you don't know how to do that, it's on my website. Finally, I'd like to state there were no anti-speed camera campaigners involved in this video or in the research presented on my website. I am simply an engineer who has evaluated the data available and reported what I have found honestly and accurately. Thank you.